Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we are going to do a first pass review of the budgeting software YNAB. Y-N-A-B stands for You Need a Budget. My name is Brad. I'm with Wooten CPA, and my goal is to bring peace to your tax and financial responsibilities. One of the ways I do that is through these videos here on YouTube. Please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when new videos come out. I appreciate you watching. To be honest, I can't really do a first pass review because I have been using this software personally for at least the last 12 years, possibly longer than that. It is hands down my favorite software, so I'm going to go ahead and let you know that right here at the beginning of the video. But what I am doing is I have signed up for a free trial using a different email than my regular one. And I'm going to walk through the setup process and do as best as I can of a first pass, first look review of YNAB. I haven't done the setup process in a long time, uh, but we're going to walk through this together and do kind of a, a quick first pass, how to set it up and review as we go. All right, so I'm sharing the screen here. I'm looking at it. It says, let's build your budget together. Three simple steps. You're going to gain more control of your money. Let's get started by setting some targets. Targets can be for regular expenses or goals and are for saving the goals you're saving for. Can help you decide how much. All right, I, I don't use targets too much. I have a couple of accounts where I use this, but this is where it wants you to start. So it's going to come in and ask you about rent and mortgage, which is a pretty normal one. You can either choose need for spending, a savings balance, a monthly savings build, or a monthly debt payment. So mortgage is need for spending. Monthly, we're going to say we need $1,200 a month for mortgage or rent. And we need it on the last day of the month, presumably so that you have it in time to pay it at the beginning of the next month. So we'll save that target. Now, it kind of walked us into that one. And then it, it starts you with kind of this basic budget category items here. So under bills, we have rent, electric, water. We have under frequent groceries, eating out, transportation. We have some non-monthly some goals and some quality of life or fun activities. So kind of starts with these defaults. I, I have these names slightly different in mind. These are all pretty common things. So I think this is a, a decent spot to start. It's asking you for targets. Uh, I'm not sure actually, I, like I said, I, I don't use targets for my spending categories. Um, it's also asking if you want to add other categories up here. Step one says, set as many targets as you like. Next, we'll add your bank accounts. So I'll tell you what, I, it made me do that one. I'm I'm going to save this for later and just kind of keep walking through the setup. So if I click the next step, it's going to want me to connect a bank account to this. And so we will do that because when you connect a bank account, it's going to import your transactions and it's going to save you a lot of time on data entry. So right here, we're going to click add account. We're going to make it, you can you can do an unlinked account. All that means is it's not going to import transactions for you. So if you have an account with very few transactions, you might set it up that way. But for most of your, your accounts, you know, your checking or your credit card accounts that you use on a regular basis, you're going to want to link those. So in order to add a connection, we're in North America. It's going to ask us, it should ask us for what bank we, yeah. So I am at Citibank. And I'm going to type in my username and password right here real quick. Now that I've clicked submit, it's going to connect through the third-party application to give permission to my city credit card. And then it will connect it to YNAB and it will allow it to download transactions. Okay, it says we have success for connecting my city card, my city double cash card with the current balance. I'm going to select it and click next. Uh, add account details. I can change the name of it, so we're just going to shorten the name of it real quick. It is a credit card. I'm going to leave it there for now. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a top three tips video. So from what I've learned from using YNAB, there are three main things that I do that are different than the way YNAB has you set it up. It's a little bit of a workaround. Works perfectly fine within their system, but I like it a little bit better than their default settings. One of them has to do with credit cards. So jump over to that video. I'm going to release this one first, so that video might not be out yet. But there will be a YNAB uh, 
three tips, three kind of pro tips video on these things that I would set up slightly different than they have you do it for easier use. But for now, this is a credit card. It knew that to begin with. We are going to pay it all at once. If you pay it over time, you can choose that. Actually, a lot of people do pay over time, so I'm going to choose that because pay over time just means you're not paying it in full at the end of every month, but you are making either a minimum payment or a partial payment instead of paying your card off in full. Since the majority of Americans do that, I'm going to select that option for now. It's going to ask you when you want to pay it off by. Uh, it won't let me leave this blank. If you just say you want to pay it off by next year, that's fine. And it's going to create a category for your credit card payment along with the target to help you. This is the part that I don't actually like. So again, stay tuned for that pro tip video. But we'll leave it there for now since that is the default when you set up a credit card. Now we're going to link another account. I'm going to link a checking account as well so that we'll have a little bit more transactions that are coming in here, both with a checking account and a savings account. Okay, so success. My checking account is now linked as well. I'm going to connect that account. It's going to bring it in. Successfully linked. I'm going to click done. So now I have a total checking account and a credit card here in YNAB. I can move these around. I can put one below the other, I thought. Yeah, you can move them around. So now my checking account's on top. My, my city account's on bottom. It's asking me to move to the next step before I can go into those. Let's put it all together and assign your $6,100. So there's an amount in this checking account, $6,100. This is the amount in all of the bank accounts that we have linked to YNAB. So YNAB is going to want us to assign that money somewhere. So if you have $6,100 in the bank, that money is there for something. So it's going to have us walk through this. YNAB is a virtual envelope system, which is the only budget system that I recommend. And so it's going to have us assign that money to one of our spending categories or our virtual envelopes. So if you look at these, they, they are familiar. So it added that credit card payment, City Double. And so if you say, okay, of that $6,100, I'm going to pay $50 towards that credit card. You can put that there. And now your amount has dropped. Rent or mortgage, if you say, okay, I'm going to put $1,200 towards that, you can see that the amount ready to assign is decreasing as you put it into a category. 200 into electric, 100 into water, uh, $50 into internet. And so you're just putting it into where you're going to spend that money. So if you haven't spent these items yet this month, you can go ahead and assign them there. Perhaps some of this is saved towards a vacation. Some of it is savings towards home improvement. You have a little bit saved towards your entertainment. And then they didn't give us one to begin with. I was thinking of like an emergency fund account. They don't have one on here at the moment. Let's see if I can add a category. Yes, I can. So under goals, I'm going to add a category and label it emergency fund. And we're going to say that that is 2500 and so now if we've assigned everything to a category, well, we still have $233 left. So let's put that somewhere. We're going to just put that into hobbies. So now that all of the money, the 6183 that is in our checking, savings, any kind of cash account, it's going to tell you to assign that money. We've now assigned it across our spending categories. We're going to click finish your budget. So now we have YNAB set up. YNAB, when it's set up, I'm looking, and again, I told you, I, I am familiar with YNAB. So, you know, looking at it, we are in the budget tab. That's what's highlighted. So you can see these are our budget categories. And looks like they say, well, this one says funded. I think that's because we actually set up a target. Yes, we have a target and it's fully funded. If it wasn't fully funded... It would say $100 more needed by the 30th. Okay, and then because I took that out, it it added the $100 up here is ready to assign. We'll put that back in there. It's going to say fully funded. So these are our categories uh, of spending. 
and our budget categories, we have virtual envelopes where we have money assigned to them. Activity is going to be when money is spent. And so that'll get subtracted from what's assigned and then what is available. So of course, right now, the full 1200 that was assigned is also available because we haven't spent any money out of any of these categories. Looks like when I click on each one of these, it gives me some more information over here to the left. I have three options, four, five options, six options over here in my menu. I can look at the budget. I can look at reports, which shows spending, net worth, and my income versus expenses. Again, we have no transactions yet, so there's no spending, there's no income or expenses. My net worth should be, there you go. It is my assets of $61.83 in the checking account minus my debts of $576 on the credit card gives me a net worth of $5,600. So YNAB will track your net worth there if you have all of your assets and liabilities set up in YNAB. And then if I click all accounts, okay, that looks like it's transactions from both the checking and the credit card. If I click on the checking account, it looks like it's going to show me my starting balance from when I imported it. And then it has already imported a transaction from Venmo. My city credit card had a starting balance of 576 and it has imported three transactions as well. So once it does that, looks fairly easy. Uh, these are pending transactions that I got from my credit card, Netflix. Okay, well, Netflix, I'm going to call that entertainment. And I'm going to enter that. Exxon Mobil, that sure sounds like gas. Let's see if we have uh, transportation. Okay. So that's going to be transportation. And every plate, that is actually meal service. So that is going to go into groceries and enter that. So it imported those transactions. We selected a category from our spending categories or our budget categories to categorize those. We still have this one. This was a outflow of money for $140 and that was maintenance on our home. So home maintenance was an available category. We will enter that. So far, this seems fairly easy. I connected my checking account. I connected my credit card account. It walked me through. It knew what type of accounts those were. It let me uh, import those transactions by connecting them to the bank. It started me with some budget categories that seemed to make sense. Uh, and I've been able to easily import and categorize transactions. So far, this is this is very simple, which... I, I know, you know, I don't want you to think that I'm reacting to this for the first time. Again, I've said it before, I do use YNAB uh, for my own personal budget. But walking through this, it seems very simple. There's a menu here, new budget, all budgets, budget settings. Let's go into budget settings. So my budget uses US dollar. Before, after, don't show. Oh, currency placement. We'll leave it the way it was. The number format, you can you can change the date format you can change okay uh, i can manage my payees i can edit flags display options default dark or classic progress bars on or off let's turn those off and see what happens okay so i do know this as well so the progress bars disappeared so if you look at this you can click the button right here in the top right and that'll bring up these progress bars, which are green if you're funded. Uh, let's see. This one says you spent 16 of 150. So 150 was budgeted, 16 was spent. You can click on that. It'll show you what transaction that was. And then there's $133 left. So let's pause real quick. I've, I've got a bunch of videos on personal budgeting. You can jump over to that playlist and watch it. But the virtual envelope system is again the only budget system that I recommend and this is this is it right here. You put $150 into this virtual entertainment envelope. You spent $16.67 on Netflix and now you have $133.33 left to spend on entertainment. This is how you should be budgeting or doing your conscious spending plan. That is a a phrase or a term that I like a lot better than budget. Budget implies that you're limiting how much you're spending, but a conscious spending plan just means that you are spending money, but you're doing it consciously 
instead of subconsciously or unconsciously. You're doing it intentionally instead of unintentionally. So we're paying attention. We're consciously spending our money. So this is our conscious spending plan or budget right here. $150 was set aside. 16 was spent. 133 is left. Now, this is the magic here. We're in September. If I go to October, that $133 from last month is still there, and I can add to it. And then it will add to that envelope. So if you think about this, is this is an envelope that $150 went into, 16 came out of, so there is still 133 in there. And if I put another 250 in it, I have 383. So again, it's virtual envelope system. It, it is the only way to budget, in my opinion. Now, ignore this negative right here for now, because that's not what we're dealing with. You will want to address that when you use the software. But for now, we're just doing kind of that first impression. This is a check mark. All our money is assigned. We've spent some money. We've budgeted some money. We do have an overspent category here. So it's going to tell us that, and it's going to say we have three overspent categories. You've overspent it. You need to cover it. Okay. All. So we go back to all. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and show you this. I know how, how to do this. So we spent 110. So if we put 110.79 in there, it'll bring that from negative back up to zero. If we put 140 into here, It'll bring that up from negative 140 back up to zero. And so basically we're we're putting money in the envelope that we spent. Now it's going to say we're over budget by $250.79. So what you have to do is you have to subtract that from somewhere else because you, you cannot assign more money than you actually have. So for now, we're just going to subtract that out of vacation. And right there, that's a very quick and easy way of how you can move money from one envelope to another to cover your spending. So if you overspend, it's no big deal. You just move the money from another envelope. But you need to know the money that you have at any given time and what it's assigned for. So that's why the virtual envelope system is so critical. Because in a normal budget, it would have told you, okay, you overspent this by $140. And that's all it would have told you. But in a virtual envelope system like YNAB, it forces you to put the $140 where you spent it and to take it from somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, you only have $5,284. You have $6,000 in the bank. You're, you're short $758 because of the credit card. So you have to be able to assign that money. Now, we're, we're assigning more than $5,284 because we didn't put $758 towards our credit card. We only put $50 towards the credit card. And then it has this activity amount. That's all the activity that was on the credit card. And it's saying your payment is $177. See, this, this is where, again, jump to, the, jump to that video that I'm going to do about pro tips on YNAB. I do not like the way this is done. I'm going to show you a better way to set up your credit card. Uh, this, this will work, but it, it, in my opinion, it gets a little confusing. Uh, but that's kind of one of the biggest things that is a downside when I'm when I'm talking about YNAB that I don't really like the way they handle the credit cards. It, it makes sense. It does. I understand it. They're trying to help you and force you to get that credit card paid off to show you how much money you have available to pay on the credit card. Uh, I just I, I like there's a better way uh, that I think you can do this. So first pass uh, going back to reports because we do have some spending now. So we don't have any income. But we spent in groceries, transportation, home maintenance. Okay, so we've spent some money. Any of these look like I can click on them. So if I click on groceries, that's going to show me that transaction. Transportation is going to show me. So it's just going to show me the transactions that are in that category that was spent. If I click on 323, that's everything. So that's going to show me everything. It looks like I can also click on here and jump to that specific transaction. So if you find something that's miscategorized, you can do that. In the budget category, if we were looking, you can click on that and do the same thing, jump to that specific category. So uh, like I said, I've used this plenty of times. This is my first time walking through their setup. Uh, it looks pretty simple. If I had to add another account, I can add another account, linked or unlinked, walk through the same exact process. This is exactly what I would say you need for your budget. There's nothing 
overly complicated in the setup or in walking through the different menu options or the different pages within this. You can easily put money into your budget envelopes, into your conscious spending plan categories, and then you can spend that money down. You can see if you overspent a category so that you can move money from another envelope into that one to cover it. So yeah, I I think uh, I think this is this is awesome. If if this were my first pass, I would say I give this definitely a 4.9 again, the credit card, I'd have to do a little more digging into you know why my activity is showing up here and here. So got my every plate item there. I also have every plate up here. So I'd I'd have to do a little more digging into why it's showing up in two places. Uh, and what this payment amount means and how, how to pay the credit card. In fact, let's do that. Let's go in and add a credit card payment. So the payee is going to be the credit card, and we're going to pay $50, which is what we had originally set aside as our payment. So if I do that, it's going to pay $50 to the credit card. It should have showed up here too. Payment, yep, $50. So $50 came into the credit card, and $50 went out of, the checking account. So let's jump back over to our budget and see what happened. If we look at our budget, it shows that we budgeted 50. The payment is 127. I still, I'm not understanding what that payment amount is. The activity is 77. So we spent 127, we paid 50, we still spent 77. So I think it's kind of showing too that, you know, we spent more than we paid. So if you were to do that, your credit card balance is going to keep growing, which you don't want. Uh, there, We still have to $700 balance on there. So nowhere does it show needed for payoff, 631, funded 50 to go 581, 127. Yeah, guess again, I'll say it one more time. The pro tips uh, video is going to show you a different way to set your credit card up. You might have to watch some YNAB videos if you do set your credit card up this way to understand how you're supposed to use this in the budget tab. But I would say 4.8. It does exactly what I want it to do. I'm not real sure about how the credit card is set up, so I'd have to dig into that. The reports look clean and simple, very easy. One more thing before we close out this video. Looks like I can add a category group. So let's see what that would do. All right, adding a category group created one of these gray overall categories. And then there's a plus here where I could add an expense or, or an envelope. Uh, so a spending category or an envelope. And I can do that within any of these bills. So it'll pop up, then I can budget to it. I can also click on it and hide it or delete it. I can collapse these down. I can see how much money is assigned, how much has gone out, and what is available. And again, all of my available balances should add up when this is zero to what I have available in reality. So yeah, I, I again, I'm sticking with the 4.8. I think this is very intuitive. I think it's very simple. It's very clean. And it will allow you to start tracking your spending it will allow you to start doing a conscious spending plan, which is what we're calling budgeting because it's a better term and it, it's a little more accurate for what I think you should be doing. Uh, and so, yeah, this is this is great.